What's your, I told you so, moment? In high school I was at a party where everyone was getting drunk. I had come with two friends and near the end of the night, this one guy there was losing everyone into his van to get late night food. He swore he was not drunk and there were so many people in his car, including the two people I came with, it was not a battle I was going to win. But it seemed like an obviously dumb situation. Bunch of underage kids packed into a van driving around in the suburbs at 1 o'clock in the morning. I told my friends that this wasn't a good idea and they need to get out of the van and come back gone with me, my house was within walking distance. They acted like I was a party pooper for a sec but then they got out. Next day I find out the guy driving ram a red light and got t-boned by a truck. The one kid in the back almost died and everyone got banged up. The friends I pulled out of the van were in the backseat along with him. Not saying I saved their lives but. I really may have saved their lives. Good on you. It's tough to stand up to a drunk crowd like that. Since I was 14, my throat got itchy when I ate apples. I told my mom but she thought I just didn't want to eat apples and forced me to eat them. Went to the doctor's office and got a test for allergies. Turns out, I'm allergic to apples, peaches, and many other fruits. My partner and I were broke and struggling to make ends meet, but we always kept money in the budget for fun or takeout nights. One night we decided to get fish and chips. My partner had never ordered from that particular place before, but it was my favorite so he knew it'd be good. We don't have a lot of money to spare, so I know we had to order smart. We'll only order what we need. We start driving and I'm about to call, and my partner tells me he wants to order $10 worth of chips. For those of you who don't know how much that is, a scoop of chips is usually about $2 to $3. I tried to tell him that it was a ridiculous order, and that this particular fish and chip shop was very generous with their portions, which is why it was one of my favorites. He was adamant about $10 chips, and that he was so hungry that it's not like any would be wasted. We had a mini argument in the car, and I finally gave up and said, fine, order your chips but you had better eat them all. We get to the fish and chip shop and we go to the counter to pay, and the old fellow who runs the shop comes over to serve us. We tell him what order we're here to collect. That order is yours? He goes. I start to shake my head and smile. Yes, my partner replies. And it's, just for you too? The old man asks, looking concerned. Ah, yes. At this point I start laughing. I tried to tell him. We both laugh and my partner realizes his mistake when the old guy pulls out two huge parcels of chips. One of those alone would have fed a full family. We all laughed our little hearts out, thanked the man, and went home to eat our fish and chips. And no, he didn't eat them all. We didn't even get through the first parcel. Now whenever we need the other person to trust our judgment on something, we say, $10 chips. And the other person will always relent. It still cracks me up every time I think about his face when the old man gave us our order. This is more of a, I told myself so, but anyway. When I applied to medical school, one of the application essays had a prompt that asked us what we would do if we did not get into medical school. I thought I would take a risk since it was a reach school and I wanted to stand out. I kept thinking it wasn't worth it and that I should just write a normal essay, but for some reason just went with the riskier option. I wrote that I would go to law school and become a lawyer specializing in prosecuting medical malpractice. I ended up getting an interview and had a good laugh about it with one of the interviewers. Did not get into that medical school. Lawyer here. Fired a partner who I found some real irregularities in their spending habits versus what they were making after he couldn't provide a good answer to where it came from. Other partner left and started a new firm with them because they disagreed with my decision and refused to look at the evidence. Turns out he stole 500k of a client's money, got disbarred, and is now facing prison time. I told her to look at the evidence and she didn't listen. Man shrugging medium light skin tone. I once owned a dog who was very stubborn and independent. She lived a feral life in the mountains as a young pup, and I feel like that played a role. She felt more like a roommate than a pet. She was having heart trouble when she got older so she had to get a chest scan at the vet. These two men came out to get her, so I gave them a heads up that she would absolutely dislike being flipped on her back and held there for the scan. Flipping a dog on its back is putting it in a pretty submissive position. One of the guys interrupted me and basically said they were professionals and I had to just let them work. They snapped a muzzle on her and took her to the back. A few seconds pass, then I hear a crash and a few yells. One of the guys who took her comes out and sheepishly asks for my help. It turns out as soon as they flipped her on her back she kicked out of their arms, unclipped her muzzle, 
removed it with her front paws, then made a mad dash for freedom. I caught her roaming around the back of the vet's office and she was perfectly well behaved while I held her for the scan. I felt bad for two guys she escaped from, but I had tried to warn them. This dumb asshole woman wouldn't leave the llamas at our petting zoo alone, even after I warned her. Eventually they had enough and spit all over her. Green goopy spit from head to torso. She threw up a bunch and I laughed. Until I smelled it and then I was retching too. Went to the doctor on and off for breathing problems to no avail. A lot of, rub some dirt on it, mentality. Wound up in the ur as a result of an asthma attack. Kept the bracelet on and everything when I went back the next week to see him. Not as satisfying as I would have hoped. I was a fresh-faced sysadmin, a PFY if you will, who had just been handed my first big project. I took it over after it was already in progress due to the lead admin having a medical emergency. It was a critical environment and the key component was a two-node database cluster. I was in way over my head but I had support from a few project members and so I was making my way through it. At one point I was reviewing the connectivity to the servers. The idea for a critical piece of infrastructure is to reduce single points of failure, SPOF. As I was going through the documentation I noticed both database servers had all of their network connections run to the same switch. So I brought it up to the network guy on the team, a senior engineer. He said not to worry about it and brushed me off. So I brought it up on the next project call. I said, if we're trying to keep this thing up and running according to the SLA we really need to eliminate this issue and put half the connections for both systems to another switch. Senior network guy said I was wrong. Switches are very reliable and rarely fail. Like I said, this was my first project so I relented. The systems went live, into production use, the next week. Literally within five days of the systems being live and customer facing, the fucking switch dies. Both nodes of the cluster go offline, the database is down, the app is down. Huge cost to the business unit customer. The outage review call was pretty fun, as the admin I was asked why the systems were connected to the same switch. I said I had called that out as a risk and the network guy said it was no problem and I was overruled. It was awesome when the call leader asked the network guy if he still felt that way laughing face. Someone started talking about a bottle of Newman's own salad dressing while at dinner with my family and I said something like, I'm pretty sure that was started by the actor, race car driver Paul Newman. To which one of my siblings replied, no it was someone else. I grabbed the bottle and turned it around and started reading the label out loud. The first sentence was, Paul Newman's career was acting, but his passion was auto racing. I stopped reading after that. Bed frame wasn't properly lashed down while moving. Partner insisted the weight of the frame would keep it in place. Flew into the middle of a major intersection on a left turn. We dodged four lanes of oncoming traffic to collect the pieces. I fixed my partner with a look that could peel paint, and he said, I know, I know, you told me so and you're right. I'm sorry. I still give him shit for it every time we move something. It's funny now, but goddamn was I pissed at the time. My newborn baby was projectile vomiting after every feeding. I took her to the doctor several times, always ended up being sent away with suggestions to try a different formula. I tried like four different ones, no change. The fourth or fifth visit, they sent me away again with the same recommendation even though I pleaded with them to figure out what was wrong with my baby. I left the office and drove to the ER instead. She ended up having emergency surgery that day. The surgeon said she would have starved to death, or maybe dehydrated had she gone much longer without the surgery. I gave the doctors in that office a piece of my mind. I told my mom, who is a nurse, that I am sick and she said I was lying. After two months and a lot of blood coughed up she took me to the doctor. I had pneumonia and a double ear infection. I also had a bunch other issues that I can't really remember. I had to take seven medications and have to use a nebulizer daily. That was the biggest I told you so moment I ever had. Yeah that's a pretty classic and obvious warning sign for pyloric stenosis, I dk how so many doctors would dismiss that so easily. My sister and I were out sledding when we were kids at this place with a really steep hill. I had unknowingly gone down a sled path that had a jump in it, and when I landed it really hurt my back. So when I got back up to the top of the hill I told my sister, don't go that way, the jump really hurts. She called me a baby and didn't believe me that it really hurt so she decided she would go down that path on her sled. Well, she hit the jump and didn't get back up, turns out she fell so hard she had broken her leg. 
When we finally got her back up the hill and to the car, I got to tell her, I told you so. Was picking beans with my sister and mom. To this day I still don't know why the fence was electric but it was. I touched it and I got zapped. It wasn't too bad but it hurt. I jumped away and my sister saw me. I said that it was an electric fence. Of course she just thought I was pranking her. I was trying to tell her the whole time we picked beans but she didn't believe me. Right at the end she touched the fence and she didn't see it coming at all. Her face was just like, oh she, loved the car ride home, I told you. Idiot. It's so the beans don't run off. I work at a US Navy shipyard. My worst, I told you so, moment was when a submarine had multiple issues with sanitation, collection tanks and the piping that led from the showers and toilets to the sanitation, collection tanks. Documented and pointed out the same problems over a 12-week period. Supervisors and the tank area manager didn't give a damn and pointedly ignored my reports. Undocking day was approaching and the captain of the sub wanted the boat out on time. So they moved up the tank closure schedule. So tank closing protocol requires several sign-offs. One from a qualified civilian inspector. One from a qualified Navy hull technician sailor. And one from a qualified Navy engineering officer. That tank in question failed all three concurrent inspections. Undocking got pushed back by 30 days until all problems found were corrected. Daily operations estimated costs were north of $10,000 per day. Factor in the mandatory overtime and rework required and we were looking at maybe triple the daily cost. This is just people's pay. I didn't get to see the material cost overrun but I know for a fact that a lot of the materials got shipped in or fabricated in-house overnight. Needless to say, a lot of people on general schedule pay got chewed out by the then shipyard CO in private. Ah yes. Our tax dollars at work. Deleted.